adjusting to life back in the world wasn't actually that hard when I came out of the convent in February 2021 because I knew that it's what Jesus wanted for me. So that transition was actually easy. He said to me very clearly in one of my last prayer sessions, you know, it's okay for you to leave. You know, you're not going to make it as a, as a Carmelite nun, which was fine. This is not what he wanted me to do. So he said, it's okay to leave, but I'm, I'm coming with you. We're going back out into the world and we're going to do your, your new life together. So it was actually very easy. And I remember saying to my novice mistress, I really can't wait to get out now. And that was no disrespect to the sisters or the life. It was just, I knew I didn't belong there. Therefore, I wanted my next step. So that transition was actually very, very easy. And I was raring to go. The initial, I think the initial difficulty was just being back in obviously the world being a lot more secular than a than a monastery. Any order of monastery is very, very quiet. The life centres around God, centres around prayer. People centre around trying to be the best they can be for each other. This is very much one of the pinnacles of monastic life. You You wake up every day trying to be as joyful as you can to help the community. And in everyday life in the world, you know, a lot of people are like that, don't get me wrong, but there's a, the, there isn't a, a stricter sense of it. It's just people going about their lives and it's not, it's not always looking at how to be, how to be the best people for each other. There's definitely a much more secular ego ridden roller coaster in in the world so that was that was initially a little bit like oh i remember i i was in a in a supermarket and i saw some people shouting at each other and i hadn't heard that for so long <laughs> i hadn't heard any any arguing or any you know anything it was just so it was just so different you're looking at people and you're thinking why why are you behaving you know you you do find that you 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 crave love even more you want to see love in the world more you want to see quiet you want to see peace so that was that was quite quite hard we did have a few tips in the monastery but i'm not talking about blazing rows or violence or anything like that you know of course you put the news on today and that's all you see so there was a great deal of just trying to fit trying to retain as much as i could of of remembering what was important, keeping my sense of prayer, trying to trying to remember to have those little bits of solitude in the day when I could, really cling on to what it had what it had taught me. Freedom was was one of the greatest things, obviously, because I could live by my own clock again. I didn't need to be summoned by the bells. I didn't need to be doing a timetable that was the same every day. I could choose. So choosing was amazing. I remember I could choose all the food I wanted to eat in the supermarket and we couldn't do that in there. It was what you were given on the day you ate. So a lot of the a lot of the freedom, I really couldn't wait to embrace that. And I really did enjoy that. And I probably ate and drank way too much when I when I left. But that's OK. You know, we're just just enjoying it. You, you really do have to give up an awful lot in a monastic environment. I can't, I can't stress that as, uh, you know, it's very strict and you don't get to be the boss of you. You know, it, it's novice mistress, prioress, senior sisters, and you're just pulled along with the, the flow of the life, the divine office. So I was very, I was very happy to, to be back in the world, but trying to, re trying to retain these beautiful, important messages that I'd learned while I was in there. The world is very noisy, so that took me quite a while to get used to. I remember I was driving, my, my cousin Sophie came to drive me back from, from the monastery because I'd left my car at my dad's and I remember she was driving and I was actually quite freaked out in the car <laughs> because I'd not been in a car for four months and the world was so noisy and just how many people there were and it was it really was incredible because I'd just been silent in a cloister and barely seen anybody but the same sisters for nearly five months so that's a Simba so that was really quite quite a challenge 
to uh, be surrounded by lots and lots of people again um, kind of felt a little bit claustrophobic for a while and a little bit overwhelmed but you you get used to it whatever path you are destined to take in this world Jesus will give you the grace and the strength to live that to walk that to walk that path so I think as long as we're we're retaining the qualities we learn from monastic life and 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 having those lived fully in the world then then it will all it will all work out the importance of prayer the importance of solitude the importance of the animal kingdom yes sweetie <laughs> yes should we play the circle of life for everyone to see isn't he lovely <laughs> little simba okay do you want to go and make a snowman now <laughs> so and that's another thing you know i couldn't I couldn't live without animals. I couldn't do that. I've been a massive animal lover ever since I was a child. Huge nature loving spirit and and not to be able to have little animals and pets as much, you know, their therapy, as much as they are huge amounts of unconditional love. And that was something I just found that I I missed in, in the monastery. So now I have three beautiful Maine Coons to make up for that. Initially, that had been very hard. You know, it is very tough on friends and family when you're leaving. Everybody cares for you and wants to make sure you're doing the right decision. You know, you want to make sure you're making the right choices for, for yourself. So, of course, there's going to be a lot of worry. My family aren't from a Catholic church background. They don't go to church now. So I was very much... Um, not the odd one out, but I, I've, I felt like the different one, you know, the one that was going to do something different. And that's that's something I've grown up feeling and 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 as I've gotten older owning so so it was hard and then and on top of not being from a Catholic church background to understand monastic life on top of that was even harder so you have to take it very gently with with family with parents with with close friends and just explain to them that this is something that you have to do for yourself and 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 really embrace that really really embrace it and people generally do come round once they see how happy you are and if they don't come round then that's not your fault you have to live the life you're born to live like <laughs> the reverend mother says that to maria in the sound of music you have to embrace that life you know we only get one shot at this particular life and i think it's i think it's important to to really hang on to that relationship with with Jesus and and try to be as faithful as you can to what he's asking you know whether you stay in a monastery whether you leave a monastery whatever you're you're going through in life uh, hang hang on to that and and try to be try to be faithful to that relationship <laughs> 